He's not in Disney, and she just walked from room to room to room saying, Dad, all she could kept saying was Dad, Dad, and she would be like, oh God, Dad, and she was only seven. In that cold case, at a 17-year-old cold case, good evening everyone and welcome here to ABC Action News at 5. I'm Paula Grolden for Jameson. And I'm Wendy Ryan. Thank you for joining us. First tonight, Robert Helfrey was reported missing back in 2006, and today a car registered to him was found underwater in a local pond. ABC Action News reporter Eric Waxler is in Palm Harbor, where a volunteer search team helped make that discovery. Robert Helfrey had been missing for nearly 18 years, but Ken Fleming and Michael Sullivan never stopped looking for him. You know, his mom's 82 years old, and, uh, you know, to do this for her, is just it, it means the world to us. And you know, this is why we love to do this, is, you know, to help these families out. Helfrey was 34 when he was last seen leaving an Irish pub in May of 2006. He was driving the Mitsubishi SUV Mike and Ken found Thursday at the bottom of this pond in a Palm Harbor subdivision. Sullivan is a sonar expert, Fleming a diver. Together they volunteer to search for people missing in cars. So you can see in the background here, we've got the small sonar boats. Mike's goes into the smaller ponds a little bit slower. Mine goes into the larger canals a little bit faster. They searched hundreds of bodies of water looking for Helfrey, targeting the area around where his cell phone last pinged. We don't always get a cell phone ping. On no, this we one, don't. this one we did, and even with the cell phone ping, it took, uh, what, a year, year and a half? Yeah, a year and a half to find this guy, so it was uh, it was a tough one. Helfrey's mother tells us the family is in pain, but relieved to have some closure. This was the first case that uh, that we took on when we started, you know, started this organization was, was the Robert Helfrey case. So it's nice to see it, you know, to, to give his family those answers. Meanwhile, the guys from Sunshine State Sonar and Recon Dive Recovery say there are 20 or so other missing persons cases they are helping with all over the state. They have specialized equipment, they have unique training, and they can help close missing person cases that have been open for years. In this pond, in the 200 block of Old Oak Circle in Palm Harbor, under the surface of dark and murky water, volunteers from Sunshine State Sonar and Recon Dive Recovery found a long missing car. Inside were human remains. They believe are 34-year-old Robert Helfrey it's not the first time they have helped solve a missing persons case. This is the third case that we've solved in the last, since January 6th, we, January 6th we solved the Karen Moore case, um, that was a 22 year cold case. Um, last week we just solved Robert Heike, the missing school teacher from Port Orange, and now yesterday we just solved Robert Helfrey. It's an all volunteer effort. They say sometimes families reach out to them. Sometimes law enforcement will put out a request for help and sometimes they look for cases that their unique abilities may be able to assist with. So we look at, you know, where this person was last seen, where they were traveling to and from, and we search bodies of water in between there um, in hopes to find that, that person. But even when they find locations to search, conditions can be very problematic. And that was the case when they found this missing car. On this one, I couldn't see it. It was zero vis, and all I got is particulate and I have a $900 dive light and I couldn't see this far in front of my face. After using side scan sonar and other technology, diver Ken Fleming went underwater to confirm they had found a car. I felt that flat roof, those rounded edges, that's a car. They're giving answers to families who may have had questions for a long time. On May 22nd, 2006, Robert Helfrey ate at this very bar, Peggy O'Neill's Irish Pub and Eatery. That was the last time he was ever seen as he climbed into his Mitsubishi hatchback and was never seen again here. So we're at the pub right now. You see this street, Palm Harbor Boulevard? If you go straight down this road and make a left at Florida Avenue, it dead ends into this park right here, which is known as Pop Stancil Park. Now, this is just a straight shot, and in my experience, you know, working with Adventures with Purpose and different things like that, most of the time, I mean, if you look into Robert's case, he had sleep apnea, he had high blood pressure, he was supposed to be tested for sleep apnea the next day, but he never went to the visit. So I'm thinking this is going to be our first place to search, Pop Stancil Park. We'll get the boats out, we'll get sonar, we'll get in the water. If we see anything that looks like a potential car, we'll mark it with a magnet, put a buoy on top, dive down, and that's what we're going to be doing today. If 
we do have time, we're gonna go to one more boat ramp. That's the plan for right now. So hopefully we'll find Robert today. So this is the first spot we're gonna be searching today. over by that dock it's gonna get actually pretty neat. Range I'm scanning 60 foot out. It went from 9 to 3.7 feet. We just got finished uh, sonaring. It didn't get any deeper than five and a half feet. You can see behind me too it's getting pretty dark stormy looking. So we're gonna head over to the next spot and hopefully we can get there and sonar that before it starts raining. We went over to the water treatment facility where his cell phone ping was and I asked to speak to someone who could potentially give me permission to search the pond. The lady at the front told me on the intercom that I needed to come tomorrow morning. So I think that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna come back tomorrow morning and see what happens and ask for permission. Hopefully this body of water has been sonar before. Being that this is a 16 year old cold case, I highly think that he is in his vehicle underwater. As for where, we don't know, but we did speak to the Sheriff's Department today and they might try to give us a call to potentially help them tomorrow. Uh, what I do know though is today has just been a day of running around, getting information, um, and sonaring you know, two different locations and crossing off two other locations. I promise you, look, it kind of looks like a car. So look guys, we're looking at this right here. I don't know if this is a car or not, but come on. Left, right here. A buoy is marking what we think is a car or a silted in car. Luke and I are gonna suit up, check it out and stay close. That's all I gotta say. There's probably gonna be some unwanted visitors in this uh, Florida area. Anyways, we're gonna get to the truck and suit up and get in the water. When a car goes into the water, especially if it goes at a high speed, um, hits the water and then, you know, there's a lot of air inside, it's so it's gonna float. And then, you know, over time, it probably takes about five minutes, but then it'll sink to the bottom. So, I mean, if this was 16 years ago, you gotta think if it's been 16 years, there's been the tide coming in and out and probably a lot of sand and silt and stuff covering it. So you think there's a car down there? So we think that's what possibly that is. We're gonna di have to dive it though to figure it out, but. It'd be amazing if we we'd solved that case too. You know? Oh, it's a fair dollar. Yo, look at that. Hey, there's a car. LTS K7. Hey, did you just find that? Right there? There might be a car in here, man. Keep that. That's awesome. I don't know what this is. 
It's so, it's so murky I can't even see. What is this? It's something huge! Dude, there's oysters caked all over it. I don't know what it is. There's oysters caked all over it. I don't know what it is. I mean, I don't know what that is though. It looks like some sort of big box. It's about the right size of a car. It was about 10 feet. I don't think we could pull it out. There ain't no way we can get this out. It's too buried. It's way too buried. I mean, you know, it, it could have made sense for a car if it was tilted in, you know? That's why we, you know, that's how you learn on Tunar. All right, everybody, it's been a great day of searching for Robert. Um, you know, we, we went to three different locations today, and I really thought that first spot was going to be great. I had a couple of deep pockets, and we actually found this huge square piece of metal. It's like 10 foot long. We were underneath the water. It was covered by all these different barnacles. It is salt water down there, so it makes stuff look a lot different on the sonar, that's for sure, with all the clams and everything like that. But you dove down and he got a license plate. So if you guys can run that and let us know, you know what kind of car it came off of, that car could be in here, it could just be buried, you never know. You, th you think about this case, and if we're able to mark that body of water off, that's huge. I just want somebody to sonar the water, that's it. And someone to tell me that there are no vehicles inside. I mean, that, that in itself could solve a case. I mean, if he's sitting at the bottom of that plant. That was the worst I've been treated by any government official. I have no idea where he is. Oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. Oh, Hi there, my name is Britton Lockhart and I'm a sonar so they hung up on me. Good morning. Hey, yes, this is me again, Britton. Uh, where yeah, can you understand? I'll go ahead and open the gate and let you in. Come to the administration building, please. Okay, thank you. We got here yesterday and they didn't even want us coming in the gates. So we're gonna go there. I'm gonna walk inside and ask them if this has been sonared since 2006. If it has, we don't have a reason to be here. All right, wish me luck, guys. Day two on the search for Robert Helfrey, 34 years old. He disappeared from the Irish pub. We actually went searching for him yesterday and located a couple of targets in the bodies of water. Unfortunately, it was not any cars. It was actually a huge 10 foot piece of metal that we thought could be a silted in car. Any body of water that is near where a missing person was last seen needs to be checked. This is the closest body of water to the cell phone ping. And I think if it hasn't been checked, it definitely needs to be sonar. That was the worst I've been treated by any government official. I'm sorry. We got invited to talk to the manager of the water treatment plant. And when I walked in there, he said I had no authority to ask him questions, told me I, I couldn't dive in the water. And I told him, I said, I, I was only trying to ask for permission. I'm sorry that the interaction at the water treatment center didn't go that well. They, they had a similar view. They weren't overly happy with how it went. They're getting upset with me about wanting to sonar it too. Like, why, why couldn't they just have told me like, oh, we, we've got another sonar team. They're actually planning on coming in. Just, it, it really didn't go well. I was just trying to have a conversation with them about possibly gaining access to the water. And I really just didn't feel treated well from them. I've never been treated that way at, in any county that I've been to. I'm not worried about it. I mean, we'll deal with the water treatment thing. Uh, I mean, literally the, the only question I, I asked him and it, it kind of, it seemed like it just made him upset a little bit, but I was asking him if, if that body of water had been sonar. They said that if we're gonna check it, they prefer the sheriff's, you know, the county's dive team do that since it's a secure facility, yes, which of course. I can take care of that. I, and, I, and I wanted to say too, like we respect law enforcement and, and we're 100% we are for you guys. I always try to tell people on our channel, you know, we don't we don't blame law enforcement for not finding the vehicle. It really takes like, like years of just looking at rocks that look like stuff to really understand sonar.
thank you. Thank you. Like seriously, I just wanted to hear that somebody was going to check the water. You know, I'm trying to help out and, and I'm, I'm trying to, you know, do a good thing for, for the families. And if you talk with anybody from the water treatment plant, just please let them know that, you know, I don't, I don't have any hard feelings with them. I just want to make sure that body of water is checked. That's, that's the only thing that I was trying to do. No worries. I felt uh, hung up on. I felt uh, disrespected. And, you know, it just, it didn't really sit well with me. So I understand, you know, I mean, you'd have to clean off the boats, make sure there's no bacteria getting into the water treatment plant. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that goes into making sure that water is safe. Someone needs to sonar that body of water, whether it's me, another sonar group, the police department, somebody needs to check that water. Let me know, and like I said, if you think of it, let me know what bodies of water you hit so I can kind of keep that running list uh, going as well. That sounds great. We're definitely crossing off plenty of locations so that when we come back in the future, we can work on this case and potentially solve it. our first spot that we're searching for today after speaking to the sheriff they're gonna actually get the sheriff's dive team to come and sonar that body of water which is really good news to hear um, you guys just saw a little bit of the drama that happened I'm not gonna go into details about all this okay this this video is for Robert and it's to bring awareness to this case let's get into the water let's search for Robert today uh, I don't think this body of water has been checked uh, according to the sheriff so we're gonna check this body of water and then two other ponds. Hopefully we can find them. starting sonar now and we're already five feet deep right here I'm not really seeing too much of anything yet you see right here on the sonar where it just completely drops off now we're getting into shallower water right now but that was a really really deep pocket right there there's the road that he was traveling on right there us 19. the detective said he didn't have really any information or anything he could really put us onto. I'm seeing some fish and stuff like that over here, but nothing, no cars, nothing like that yet. So, I mean, we're in the right depth right here. It's, it's eight foot deep. That's enough to hide a car. Hundred percent a car. Was that it? That's it, probably, dude. We're going right in the area, so wherever it is right here, I'm gonna be splitting it. Go up to where I saw it, you guys. Look at it right there. See the two wheels at the bottom? We're going over it right now. You are. You are. That's it. That's it. You're on the car. On, you're on. Off. Yeah, you're on the car. You're on the car. Yeah, you're on the car. You're on it. Oh man! All right. So we found a car. Looks like a hatchback. We're gonna have to dive it for confirmation. We 
just found a car. It's at 12 feet right off the edge of this parking lot. His car being a hatchback, I'm pretty sure this car is a hatchback that we found. It looked like it on sonar and it's upside down. I'm just, I'm really surprised because I did not expect for us to find any cars down this way, especially with this being a parking lot. It doesn't really seem like a location where a car should be. Do not look inside any of the windows. Just make sure all of the windows are intact. If they are, then there's a chance that this could be our car. I'll make my way to the back of the car, grab the license plate, and we'll come up to the surface and see what it says, okay? All right. I have so many emotions right now. Um, okay, so we had just found a car off this parking lot. It's upside down. It looks like a hatchback size vehicle. I'm gonna load up the boat. It's starting to thunder and stuff. Time to call that officer and let him know that there's a car here, but it's not the car. I found what looked to be a vehicle. Um, I wanted to let you know I dove down on it. Uh, I confirmed it's not, it is not Robert's vehicle. There's no license plate on it. Um, I mean, it was half of it was completely buried beneath the silt. I don't even think you could pull it out, to be honest, because it's completely just corroding apart from the salt water. You guys want to try to get it out, more than welcome to. I wouldn't suggest it, but just wanted to give you a call and let you know. So thank you so much. Search those ponds not once, but even several times, gone back to several of them several times, yeah. just to 100% make sure. The ones that were, I considered very high priority bodies of water. This is going to sum it up too, pretty much for, for the search, because after these two locations, we're, I mean, we're basically going to leave it up to you guys. I mean, there's a couple of bodies of water north of here that we could search, but I mean, other than that, I mean, it's kind of a... Yeah, you, you're talking, part. yeah, after this, I mean, you're talking, you know, on the other side of Tampa Bay. I have started searching bodies of water um, to the south in Dunedin and Clearwater. And that's, you know, it's still out of his way, quite a bit of ways out. And so I've started uh, working my way down that way. I mean, geez, by the time this is all said and done, I'll search every body of water in Pinellas County. <laughs> so. You know, one of the things that we had all talked about um, 
was the fact that when he did speak to Zach, and I talked to Zach, the guy that last spoke to him that night, I did, I did talk to him, and you know, he told him to meet him at 2.30. You know, one of the questions we always had was, why does he give himself a 25 minute window to get home when it's literally less than four miles away, it's a five minute drive back to his house, especially that time of the night, there's nobody on the road. But instead he tells him 25 minutes. You know, that tells me that maybe he had plans of stopping somewhere else on that ride back. You know, and the fact his phone never pinged again, you know, gives you the possibly the inclination that whatever happened to him, you know, most likely happened pretty quick. And so there's a good chance he's not very far, you know, from where he was last seen. Look at look at the slime in there. We're gonna put it, we're gonna stick it over the fence right here. Right here? Yeah, let's go out there. See, it's got like a lot of algae in it. Yeah. Just gonna kitty corner it. You got the front? Yeah. Okay, we got the front. We got a little bit of water in it. Let me go around. If you could lift the front of the boat up, right? Hand me the front. Yep, and then I'll grab the back. Good stuff, brother. I always do like a, just a quick check for gators, especially in these lying grass. You don't want to be caught off guard. These are water shoes that I'm wearing, so it's all right if I step in. All right. All right, everybody. We just got on the lake. We're gonna start sonaring now. I've got everything filming for you guys on the sonar screen, so we're gonna be able to see a lot. Let's see, why don't we do a straight line back on this side? Okay. Let's see what we got? What are we scanning right now, 61? 61, yeah. <laughs> we can zoom in a little bit if you want. Let me get a better picture right about there. We'll do roughly about 50 feet. Man, this is some slime in here. Almost eight feet deep right here. Almost eight feet deep right here. So it's, it's deep enough to hide a car for sure. Definitely deep enough to hide, hide a car. I saw some jumping in this green water. Look at this, this is crazy. <laughs> Seven feet, we're gonna turn, I'm gonna turn right now. We're gonna, so this time we're gonna go over. By See, what is that? Look at that. Yeah, what do we got here? We got something there, what is that? We just turned over that, whatever it is. It's a tree that's probably gonna be picked up. Is that, turtle. is that? No. No. That's nothing. There's a big turtle right there. <laughs> Oh, all right. <laughs> really? Yeah, he's right there floating. He just went under. <laughs> well, you can see, look, there's some trees down here. See them? Oh, yeah. I saw them on the, uh, they just popped up on the, on the live scope. scope. Yeah, it was a perfect image of like a tree. So we're scanning the back part of this pond right now. There's a couple of houses over like here. A warehouse or something on the back side over here, possibly? Yeah. We haven't seen anything yet. Seen a couple of trees over on live scope, but it's quiet. all is quiet over here. This whole section is clear, no cars, nothing. We're good to go to the next location. Let's do it. He went missing on May 22, 2006, last seen leaving a bar named Peggy O'Neill's in his vehicle and was supposed to meet a friend at his residence nearby. The friend mentions that although he spoke to Helfrey by phone, he never met with him. See how deep this water is right here at this boat ramp. It's eight feet at the ramp. So I got a side scan going with live scope right now. And we're just gonna 
do some pass on this area. I'm doing a scan of 50 feet on each side of the boat. Oh, we got a dead fish over here. Look at that thing, the huge dead fish right here. Okay, this I'd say this ramp is definitely clear over here. Yeah. The current is so strong though, let's go out here and you never know, a car may have been sucked out. We're about to enter the channel and we're gonna head into the town where we have all these locations that to check out, so. Oh, dude, that's sick, dude. That is sick. So we're making it now up to the parking lot where I was able to find that oyster bed or whatever that was last time. I thought it was a tilted car at first, which it could be, but we're making it up to that area, so hopefully, if my sonar was right, I thought I saw a car over there, so we're gonna go check and see. We're gonna continue up the Anclote River, um, heading eastbound. So we're going east on the river, and after this we'll do the other side of the river on the way back, and there's quite a few points of entry on that side you can drive in. So we haven't seen anything yet though. It's been uh, nothing but oyster beds, tires, and rocks. But we're crossing off locations, and we know where he's not. Yep. To rule this river out is gonna be huge because this is like a big area and it's just, I haven't had a chance to come up here and do this yet. We've been focusing on the small stuff. Yeah, the sonar overview for you guys. You can see he's scanning 30 feet to the left and 30 feet to the right, as you can see. This is our path, basically, the path that the boat is taking. You can see we're 5.2 feet deep now. Water temperature 68.7 degrees. And so, so far, what are you thinking? Nothing so far has been uh, nothing but rocks <laughs> so it is though you know you could come out here you could spend 12 hours in this florida sun and not find anything you know yeah desert storm veteran robert helfrey finally headed home. I always had like visions or like dreams that he would just come back like while I was at school or something and be like psych like I was in the Navy or like I was in witness protection or something he would just come back and surprise me. Everything was surreal there was uh, he's been missing for so long that it was uh, like almost unbelievable like maybe th this wasn't gonna happen because I had gotten the phone call a couple of times and got very excited and so I kind of learned to suppress that. Susan and Zoe are thankful for the volunteers at Sunshine State Sonar and Recon Dive Recovery for the countless hours they spent searching for Bob, saying it's not closure, but answers they've desperately needed. So this is bittersweet. It's like an ending to a horrible 17 years. <laughs> I feel like everything does happen for a reason, but I don't know what the reason is yet. <laughs> so I guess we'll find out. Yeah. And right now, the medical examiner's office is working to confirm the identity of the human remains.